out. Sorry about that. Uh, welcome to another week. I hope you guys all had a nice weekend. Uh, we are on track for uh, our third week of React. Uh, we are diving into the blog project tonight, which I have been told from uh, other students that this is the moment where um, they see something in React, they see something that we do in this project, and then they take that and they want to go apply it right into their capstones, right? Um, and this uh, project we will be coming back to just like we did for the weather project. Uh, we'll be circling back to this uh, once we get our API working and learn about databases. We learn how to store the blog posts, not only just in local storage. Um, so this is really, um, you know, this project is kind of the uh, evolutionary project, right? We see it first in HTML and vanilla JavaScript. Then we see how we convert that blog project over into React. Uh, we'll use local storage for uh, this project. We'll go on and learn about uh, databases and APIs coming up. Then we come back to the React version of this project, learn how to hook in our API and our database. Um, this will also be the project that we learn how to do authentication in. So if you guys have a login screen in your capstone, Ryan will be coming in uh, teaching authentication uh, using a library called Clerk. Um, and, th and this will be the project that you practice in. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, so that's what's coming down the pipeline. We will dive into code in a couple minutes. Um, I do want to say sorry for the quiz that was due uh, on Sunday. That was premature. So I have pushed that due date out a week. There are two or three questions in there with routing and multi-page apps and links, uh, which we have not covered yet. So that quiz is pushed out a week. So sorry about causing any panic of you guys going through that and going like, I don't know how the fuck to do this. Um, although kudos to uh, a student or two who used ChatGPT and figured out all the right answers. So that, that quiz is pushed back a week. Um, also keep an eye on Slack. Um, if your grade is uh, above an 80%, uh, you probably have nothing to worry about. Um, if it is below 80%, uh, Jason will probably be reaching out to you um, in the next couple of days about a academic warning plan, uh, which is just a way to help you guys get back on track and, and get caught up. So be on the lookout for any messages from Jason uh, if your grade is a little lower right now. Um, and don't forget, New York Times is probably the best assignment uh, if you can get that uh, uh, in. That is a 20-point assignment, and that really skyrockets your grade. As always, I am available for any one on ones. With all of that said, uh, oh, one last logistical thing. Um, I've been playing around. I'm back at my office uh, and have my my setup here, uh, but I'm going to uh, use you guys as a guinea pig. I'm going to ask you guys uh, at the end of class if you thought the sound at the first half of class was better, the second half of class, or you couldn't notice a difference. So just see, uh, planting the seed for that, just in case you can hear any difference. You might not. Okay, with all of that said, do we have any questions? Do we have any tangents that we want to go down? Do we have any concepts in React that we're struggling with? How are we feeling? No questions. Ready to dive into Probably our final React project. We may have one more. Uh, I I kind of don't really under like I know that uh, uh Nathan explained um console uh assert. I'm I'm still like, trying to understand that. Um, yeah. So concert console assert is um there are a bunch of logs built into the, the console, right? So we see console.log all the time. Um, there are other things like console.error, console.warning, um, console.debug. And basically, when you're building a large application, um, there are all different kinds of um, console uh, levels, right? So console.log is kind of the default go-to. It doesn't really say much about it. But when we have so many logs, we start to want to try to categorize them, right? Um, and so we start breaking those down into uh, console.debug, which is more of like a, hey, if something's going wrong, these are really uh, detailed error messages, but we filter them out by default. 
all the way up to console.error, which is shit hit the fan somewhere, um, and, and we need to figure out where. So console.assert um, is basically a way to do um, an if statement combined with an expected output. So a console.assert is going to say, okay, go check this thing. Go check to see if this is true, right? Go evaluate this out. And whatever should be coming out of that expression, we expect to be this thing. And if it's not, we get to see that output in the console. Does that help at all? Yeah, yeah. So so you so you're using when you like want to like test stuff, right? Correct. Yep. And you'll see that mostly in um uh what did he show you guys? Jest? No, we didn't even get around to Jest. Uh I'm trying to think. There's um Puppeteer and um Oh, what's the newer version of Selenium? Anyway, the whole point with testing is as you build out your application, um, usually starting at unit tests, which are the smallest type of tests, um, you'll realize that uh, by fixing one thing or adding a new feature, you may not realize you're breaking the other feature, right? Um, and so the idea with that um, is to write unit tests when you build the feature in the first place. And that way, whenever you go to add to it, whether it's updating a function, whether it's adding another one, Cypress, thank you, Austin. Um, you know, whatever it is there, um, you want to basically write a bunch of assertions um, to say, hey, this is based off of this function, this is the output that we expect. And uh, console of uh, a session is only exclusively for React, or can I do that in vanilla JavaScript? Nope, you can do that in vanilla JavaScript. Good question. Any other questions? And the, uh, uh, let me pull this over to the right monitor. Um, the example in MDN is kind of helpful here. Um, it's saying, hey, um, we want to check to see if the number is even or not, right? And so you'll see, uh, based off of this, it says assertion failed, number was three because we passed it here. The error message is the number is not even, but the console assert is basically checking to see if the number uh, divided by two has a remainder. Um, and if it does have a remainder, um, then, it, then it outputs the error message. So that's kind of a... a very technical example of uh, assert, um, but the, the general idea there is to say, hey, log this out if and only if this thing doesn't produce an output we are expecting. Uh, speaking of tests, how can I test uh, asynchronous code such as API calls or timers in React components? Um, also, how does the wait for function help in uh, testing asynchronous behavior? Um, so the the best way to test asynchronous code is to output it in your in your HTML, right? Um, so make the API call, just like the New York Times, extract out the data that you want, set it in state, and then render whatever value that is in state into your component. Um, that's going to be the most common way that we use an API um, other than uh, submitting form data, which would probably be the second most common way to use an API. Um, the most common way will be data comes back from an API. We need to get that to show up on, on the screen, right? Um, you could definitely dive into unit tests for API calls um, using the await function, make the API call parse out the JSON. Um, and if the JSON contains this value, um, chances are that it's working and that, that, that we can automate that unit test. Um, but for the sake of, hey, I'm getting practice with API calls and all of that kind of stuff, the best way to test it will be to either log it out when you're done um, or show it on a page. Um, the next step from that is unit testing, and then we go all the way up to uh, Cypress, right, which is kind of your end-to-end -end testing of, I should be able to click here, the API call should happen and show this data on the page, I should be able to click on this link and it should take me to the next page, all of that kind of stuff. 
Um, so testing is a very uh, broad thing to do. Um, and that's why we don't require unit tests or end-to-end -end tests of your capstone. Um, but as your projects grow, as you have more developers use it, it becomes more helpful um, to have more automated tests set up. Um, and there is something called TDD. I don't know if Nathan covered that at all, test-driven development. Um, and that was a, a big, um, I don't want to say fad or craze, but it uh, became very popular, I want to say, I don't know, five years ago. Um, and I hear less about it now. Um, but the general idea of test-driven development is you write out all of your tests before you write even the function, right? So you say, hey, I'm making this new function, and if it gets this as an input and this as an input, this should be the output. And obviously that test fails because the function doesn't exist at all. Then you build out the whole function and you know you're done building the function when the tests pass. Um, and so that's kind of a way to hold yourself accountable for everything and say, I'm going to think of the tests and the use cases and whatever gets inputted into this before I build the function. And then I know I'm done building the function at the end of it. Um, so that can be a, um, a, a question that pops up on a technical interview, um, but test-driven development is just a, a way of kind of developing in reverse, build the test first, have all the tests uh, fail, build the function, make all the tests pass, and that way you've created them uh, before, um, the, the tests before you've actually built it. Um, wait for, um, I have to look up, I believe that is React specific. Um, and the general idea with wait for um, is that you're waiting for that um, that component to render um, or you're waiting for a certain timeout, right? Um, and so the wait for function is really helpful. It is combined with promises um, and it basically says, hey, um, when we uh, show the React component for the first time, it's going to show loading, right? Because there's no data in state. Then it's going to go make the API call. Then the API call is going to set some data in state. The data in state is going to trigger a re-render. It's going to look through the, uh, the virtual DOM. It's going to find the things that are using that state variable, and it is going to re-render them based off of the new data in state. Um, and so that's what the wait for function can be really helpful with when you are testing. Um, you can either say, hey, this API call needs some time to run. So wait, wait 2000 milliseconds, wait two seconds, the data will be ready at that point, and then check to see if that data is showing up on the page. Um, the more powerful way, uh, I shouldn't say more powerful, but um, a even better way of writing your tests is basically saying, hey, wait for a div with this ID to show up, right? So wait for a div with the ID of data to show up, then check to make sure the information is in it. Um, and then you can set a timeout on that as well. You can say, hey, um, wait five seconds for this ID to show up. And if the ID hasn't shown up by that time, fail the test. Um, and so we do that with um, the bot that uploads the videos at the end of class every night. We say, click on the login button. Um, but when you hit the login button with Google, Google puts up a page and then we have to wait for the page to load and wait for the email input to show up before we can click into it and type in the, the email address, right? Um, so that wait for function um, is promise-based. Um, so you do have to use an await with an await for, um, but it's just a really easy way to say, hey, my code's going to take some time to run before that shows up on the page. Um, and so because of that, you know, wait for that to happen and then go from there. Um, and I'm not familiar with Playwright. Um I will have to look into that. Is Playwright something that Nathan brought up? Uh, no, I just seen it on a YouTube video when I was searching up end-to-end -end testing. Um, so it looks like an alternative off just, you know, very initial um, reaction to it. It looks like it's very similar to Cypress. 
um, which is, you know, also for end to end testing. Um, the thing that I really like about Cypress is they have a UI tool um, that allows you to kind of build the test cases by just clicking on things on the page. Um, and I'm uh, Playwright may have have that same thing. Um, the really quick way of um, comparing uh, similar products is you can actually um, look up their GitHubs. Um, and this is not a, a be all end all, but um, if you look at the uh, Cypress uh, repository here, I can pull this over to the screen. Um, you can see that it has 46.5 thousand stars, which is obviously a lot. Um, and then if you look at uh, Playwright, it's got 64,000. So that is a really quick way to say, hey, uh, am I going down a path of following like this little niche tool that not a lot of people know how to use um, or doesn't have a lot of support? Or am I getting behind something that obviously has a lot of support, will be easier to learn, has a bigger community, has more YouTubers, has more uh, documentation, all of that stuff. So the fact that Microsoft is the one behind Playwright is obviously a ringing endorsement. The fact that it has a ton of stars is a ringing endorsement. Um, so at that point you say, hey, let me take what I know about Cypress. Let me try and do an hour long project using Cypress and then start a timer. When the timer goes off, stop, put it down, then go do the exact same project in play, right? right? And if you can make it farther in that project, if you can get um, more things tested, if you can get better results out of it, then that's kind of how you can uh, pick some, something like that, a tool of that size. Um, bigger stacks and frameworks, obviously you need to invest more than an hour into, um, but the good news is Normally, as a junior developer, um, you're not going to be the one picking the tools when you start a, a job, um, unless you're an entrepreneur, unless you're doing contract work, which is a little bit different of a scenario. Um, gen generally, when you come in at a company, they're not going to dump a project on you and give you free reign and say, pick whatever tools you want, right? Um, they're going to come in and say, well, we've got 20 .NET developers on the team, so you got to learn .NET. Or, oh, we're using Docker for our deployments and managing our environment, so you're going to use Docker. Um, so generally, you don't have to worry about finding new tools as a junior developer. It's more about learning them. Um, but the good news is hopefully most of the tools that you're um, seeing in the workplace, you'll be able to connect back in, right? And you'll be able to say, oh... I don't know Playwright, but I know Cypress and they accomplish the same thing. So all I need to do is translate the knowledge over instead of starting from scratch. Um, but Playwright looks, you know, like I've only seen it for two minutes, um, but it looks like a worthy competitor to Cypress. Um, and at that point, it is definitely worth asking ChatGPT or finding a Medium blog post or finding a YouTuber uh, who has spent that time already to say, well, why do you like Cypress over Playwright, right? Um, and the thing that you'll learn pretty quickly in our community is that developers are very, very opinionated. Um, and so they will, um, you'll have one, and you'll see this at OpenHack, um, you'll have one person say JavaScript is the best and it's one language and you can use it everywhere. And the next person will come in and say, JavaScript is terrible and the syntax is outdated and this other language is much better. And both developers will have thousands of hours logged in, in creating programs in both of those languages. Um, and it doesn't mean someone is right or wrong, just means that they have a, a different opinion about it, right? Um, so just keep that in mind um, and never be afraid to ask questions, right? If someone goes, oh, I love Ruby on Rails, you've reached the point now or you will in the next couple of weeks where you can go, well, why? Is that something I should learn? Are there a lot of employers hiring for that right now? What makes Ruby on Rails better than JavaScript? And the developer may come back and go, oh, I don't know JavaScript. I just know Ruby on Rails is better. And you're like, well, how can you know if something is better unless you know both of them, right? Um, so, uh, you will be face. You will uh, be exposed to multiple opinions. Um, some opinions are obviously stronger than others, 
Um, but I think a lot of English speakers would say that English is a better language than French. And I think a lot of French speakers would say French is a lot better of a language than English, right? Um, so never be afraid to push back on that and ask questions uh, because opinions are always based off of something. Um, and that can kind of help you understand where that opinion is coming from. Uh, there's a question in chat, but... Oh, question? Oh, no, I was just saying thank you. Oh, of course. Uh, good questions. Thank you for throwing those out. Uh, Terry, and then I'll get to the question in chat. So uh, with index, uh, is it mainly need, need to be used for uh, an array? Yes. Um, index of I uh, can also be used with a string. Um, so you can say, um, hey, uh, I've got a string that says... Um, I have a dog and walk it, and you want to know the index of the the letters D-O-G or the starting index of that. Um, so you can say index of D-O-G, and it will give you um, the index, basically to the number of letters into the string of D -O or the starting of D-O-G. Um, and then it will return out negative one if it can't find the, the substring, basically D-O-G, in the entire string. Um, compared to if you do that on an index, obviously it's gonna return out the index in the entire list. Um, so both the same concept on two different data types. Um, there is also a newer function now built into JavaScript thanks to ES6 called dot includes, um, because it's kind of weird that index of returns a negative one Right, And the reason it has to do it as a negative one is because your index that you're looking for could be zero. And sometimes you get into some weird territory that zero is a falsy value. And so it, it gets a little weird if you do like dot index of, and it happens to be an index of zero, that may not trip an if statement or something like that. So there is a newer function now in JavaScript called dot includes. Um, and dot includes can be run on an array and on a string, just like index of can be. Um, and instead of returning out a number of the index, it just returns true or false. Um, and that can be a, a, a easier way of not having to worry about those weird edge cases of index zero being a falsy value. Um, but they can both be used to accomplish sometimes the same thing in different scenarios. Um, haven't forgotten about his odd your question, but I'm going to jump to Joe's. Uh, isn't that because it converts a string to an array? I actually don't know how index of works under the hood. It very well could. Um, there are some functions of a string, like if you use square brackets on a string, um, and give it an index, it will return out that letter. So under the hood, it might be, um, but I do know that the JavaScript um, memory management is very different for an array than it is for a string, uh, but that doesn't mean that it, it when it calls that function, it doesn't convert it to an array first. So it very well could do that, um, and that could also be a um, JavaScript runtime difference between uh, Node and uh, V8 and all of those other ones. Okay, uh, final question. Hopefully before we, we dive into new code tonight, should our capstones be transferred into React uh, before the next check-in? How much of the JS should be done and should our API be created then? Um, I'm going to work in reverse there. Absolutely not for the API created then yet, right? We have not covered um, anything in Node yet. We haven't gotten into databases. We haven't been uh, getting into making our own API calls, any of that, or our own API endpoints. You know how to make API calls, but not how to make your own. Um, API is not this capstone check-in. Um, what should be this capstone check-in um, and I posted the link in, or the, the list in Slack. So let me pull that up. Um, so in Slack, um, so three things that you are uh, shooting for for the next capstone check-in. It is on 8-8, which I believe is a Thursday. That is uh, a week from this upcoming Thursday. Is that correct? 
I think that's correct. So not this Thursday, but the following Thursday is your next capstone check-in. Um, we want to see the majority of what you had last capstone check-in and any additional pages that you have made since then moved over into React. Um, and we're going to hammer home um, in this project, th in this upcoming blog project, um, how to move your code over, right? Because we're going to start with the existing blog and then component by component layer in everything that we had in the current blog project in the vanilla JavaScript one into React. So this project, just like the weather project, you'll get more practice moving components over. So we want to see the majority of your stuff moved over. You'll you'll see I said rebuilt. That doesn't mean start from scratch. That doesn't mean go line by line. We're going to practice taking hunks of HTML code over, moving them into components. Um, second thing that we want is a little bit of data that will eventually be in the database. Um, we should be using that in state, right? So we should be thinking about our uh, arrays, our objects, how that data is structured for the blog post, we're going to need things like the title, the content, and the timestamp. Um, you know, for your capstone, you may need um, uh, the name of the task, how often the task repeats, if the task is done or not. Or you may need the name of the plant, the scientific name of the plant, um, the location of the plant. And you probably want three or four plants loaded into state um, so that you can make a reusable component for it and make that show up, right? So we're just getting to the point at, uh, of your capstone where we're saying, hey, what, what are the reusable components? How do I structure that in the data? And how do I make sure that I'm mapping over that to return out a reusable component? And that brings me to the third thing, reusable components should be used instead of repeating HTML, right? Um, so instead of having your nav bar copied and pasted, that's 100 lines of code on every HTML page you have, instead you should have one nav bar component and you're using that nav bar component on every page, right? Or uh, instead of having a uh, task that has uh, 10 lines of a div that's using columns and laying all of that stuff out. Instead, we should have one component called task that's taking uh, a prop, and then we are able to loop over that using dot map in state to return out that component a bunch of times. So we don't need your whole capstone over in React, and it is okay to see a little bit of a regression here of, hey, I haven't moved all of my pages over yet, but what we really want to see is you've got your React project set up. At, after the end of this week, you're going to have exposure to React Router. So you're going to learn how to do a multi-page app in React, which, believe it or not, we haven't done yet. Um, and we want to see some, you thinking through some of that data structure. Again, doesn't need to be every single character in the video game. Doesn't need to be every single plant you plan on having in the database. But we just want to see some data being looped over from state to return out a component. And if you're panicked about any of that, uh, again, we have an entire week left to do the blog project. Um, and we uh, haven't covered routing yet. So you guys don't really know how to do a multi-page app yet. That's coming down the pipeline. Any questions about the upcoming capstone check-in a week from Thursday? Any questions in general? All really good questions tonight. Thank you guys for throwing all of that out. I don't know about you guys, but like 2.30 rolled around and there was something in the air and my allergies kicked in and my energy level is just like nosedive. Do you know the 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 gif? Uh, I, I'm going to take a nap right here. That was me, man, at 2.30. Fortunately, the uh, seer tech has kicked in and I am back. But man, 2.30 rolled around and it was like, why am I so tired? I thought it was the same thing, Joe, because I had a late lunch, and then it was, I think it was something in the air or some pollen kicked up or something. Not fun. Okay, let's go ahead and dive in to our blog project. Uh, I'm going to close some windows here. Of course, we're going to create React app. So I'm headed to my terminal. 
I am going to make sure that's on the right monitor, blow that up a little bit. Uh, I'm going to head to my C6 my code. I'm going to make a new folder for week 15. I'm going to hop over to my terminal and CD space. Doesn't matter where you are right now in your terminal, CD space. And I'm going to drag my week 15 folder right in and hit enter. I will PWD print my working directory to make sure that my CD worked and that I am in fact in my C6 my code week 15. And once I'm in there, I am going to npx create-react-app, and I'm going to call it d1-blog. React does not like uh, any spaces in their project names. Uh, so you can camel case it, you can underscore it. Uh, I'm gonna just dash it for now. That is going to get me rolling on uh, getting my project set up. I will pop into my week 15, grab my day one blog folder, throw that in my VS code. Uh, I am putting the live share link into the chat. And while that is firing up, I am going to go hunting for the blog project we already did. So let me go to the schedule. Uh, it looks like we finished that on week nine, day three. So I'm also going to go to week nine to my day three. Let me just make sure we don't have, nope, nothing in there. So I'm going to go to my day three, and I'm also going to pop that open in my VS code. I'm going to do a live share on this as well. Um, so you can pull both of them up, or of course, you are welcome to reference yours. Um, this is going to be a taste of what's headed your way, because in full stack development, we will also have another window open the uh for our back end right so this is why we we uh, give you guys an external monitor uh because there is a lot of code juggling going on here right totally understand that um so i'm going to try and go slowly here but as always if you feel like i'm going too fast throw a message in the chat say too fast um or Take a step back and go, all right, why am I copying and pasting? Or why why am I feeling this is going too fast? Chances are because I'm just copying and pasting it over from where we already were, right? So if you're feeling lost, just look at the code. And then finally, the, the last thing that I'll say is we learn every cohort. There are students who go, I'm not learning this. I feel like class is just flying by, right? Um, and or Or they go, I'm having trouble focusing. Something's going on. We have heard feedback every single cohort that we have done this, that people sometimes learn better when they just watch class, when all they do is they take notes. And then what they do is after class, they don't even go rewatch the video. They just try and do the steps that we did in class based off of their notes or based off of the final version of my code that always appears in GitHub. So I will warn you if, if there is an exception to this, but 95% of the time, we never ask you to turn in the code, right? You'll notice that we we very rarely say, now that you've finished class and done everything, go turn in the copy of the code. So if following along has been working for you, you feel like you're getting the concepts, by all means, continue to follow along. I will take breaks just like I always do, give you guys a minute to catch up. But if you're reaching that point where you're like, hey, there's a lot of new material that we're covering, and I feel like I'm falling behind a little bit. Just try on this project of, I'm just going to listen. I'm just going to take notes. I'm just going to copy and paste snippets of his code and write a sentence underneath it. I'm just going to sit here and, and take it all in. That is totally okay. So just throwing that out there as another option for you. Again, I wouldn't abandon ship if you were feeling like everything's going fine. Please follow along. Love it. But if you were feeling like things are going a little too fast for you, uh, just try that for 
um, a, a, uh, a another uh, another approach to learning. Topic for today is uh, React Blog Part One. It is about multi-page uh, multi-page React apps and how to move vanilla uh, web apps into React. Yes, routing is how we accomplish multi-page React apps. So um, hopefully you guys are all set up here before we start working on code. Um, let's talk about what's been going on. We've done a couple projects, right? We did Owen Wilson in React, single page. We did a to-do list in React, single page. We even did weather in React, single page. What we haven't done is done a multi-page app. And the problem that we run into with uh, React is React is what we call a SPA, a single page application, SPA. React works really well as a single page application because it uses something called the virtual DOM. The virtual DOM is how React is so efficient at updating data whenever we change the state. So we need some help. We can't just create another JS file and say, hey, when the URL changes, go use this component instead. We could, well, actually, we could do that, but someone's already built all of that out for us. And they've built that out in a package called React Router. So if I pop open React Router, just do a Google search for it, it'll be the first thing that comes up. Here is React Router. They are on version six right now, so there have been some breaking changes to it. But if we take a look in the getting started um, and look at uh, the setup, they're using something called Vite or Vite. I really should look up how that's pronounced. That is kind of the newer version of Create React App and a, a, a total fine thing to use instead of Create React App. But there is something else down here that allows us to NPM install. And that's kind of interesting because we've, we haven't really used NPM install before, right? We've used NPX. NPX stands for execute. NPM is part of NPM. Uh, NPM stands for Node Package Manager. And so we've touched on this a little bit. Um, there are things, uh, some libraries uh, call them packages. Uh, some of them will uh, call them libraries or frameworks. All of those are just pre-built code that some developer has built for other developers to use it. Yes, there are slight differences between uh, a, a package and a library, but oftentimes package is kind of the broad term. So we can install libraries as a package. So what we are going to do, one second, pull up my reference. We are going to install two packages. So I'm going to head over to my VS code. I'm going to make sure I'm in my React code. So you should have the SRC folder here. We don't want to be accidentally in the vanilla one. Make sure that we are keeping those two windows separate. I'm going to right click and open in integrated terminal. Then once my terminal pops up, instead of running npm start, which is obviously going to file, fire up my React server, we are going to run our install command instead. So we're going to say npm i, and we are going to install two packages. Just kidding, one package. It's called React Router DOM. Seen document object document object model before. This is going to when we hit enter, it's going to take a second. It's going to download in React Router to our Node modules. So we never, ever, ever edit any file inside node modules. That is a recipe for disaster. And oftentimes your changes will get overwritten. But if we pop open node modules, you will see a very, very long list of all of these packages. These are all of the packages that up until this point, React has needed to use under the hood. 
But if we scroll down enough, we will find React Router DOM has now been installed. And if we take a look inside React Router DOM, it will actually have its own package.json. And inside that package.json is basically, this is all of the information um, that NPM needs to know what is in this package, what does this package needs to need to work, what are the, the basic pieces of information on it, right? So they've got a link to their GitHub uh, repository. They will name it, obviously, and tell you what version we're on. And then if you scroll down a little bit, you will see that they have their own dependencies. And so this is where NPM can kind of get a little bit out of hand. Again, you don't really need to worry about this because this is all under the hood, but this is where NPM, uh, this is where the package can tell NPM, hey, in order for me to work, I need these two other packages. So NPM will go out and it'll pull that other package in. And then it'll go, oh, well, this package needs these other packages. So it will install those for you. So you can have what we call a dependency tree that is huge. But basically, NPM is installing everything that this package needs and everything else all the other packages need. So... I'm going to scroll back up to the top and close out of my node modules. I'm going to close my package.json. Again, we should never be editing any information inside of those. But if I look in my package.json, I can see things that are starting to be added to my project. We've always had React and React DOM. We see what we are now uh, learning about testing and what is built into React. But we can now see that we've added React Router DOM to the list by just running the npm i command and telling it what package we need to install. So from here, I can npm start, and that is going to fire up my project. I am also going to go to my uh, week, uh, whatever week it was, week nine, day three blog code. And I'm going to go ahead and start that. Uh, I'm going to hit that go live. So I have both uh, tabs open and working for me. And I will make sure I am not hijacking your 3000. That should be fixed now. So I should have the spinning React logo in one term one tab and the Max's blog open in the other one. If you have no posts or your local storage cleared out, that's okay. Uh, we just want to make sure we've got them both up and running. Everyone good? Remember, we can't go live in React. We have to do our NPM run to start. But over in our vanilla JavaScript code, that's when we can start up our live server the way we used to. Okay. We're going to clean out our files like we normally do. I'm going to head to my app.css. Go ahead and clear that out. I'm going to head to my app.js, and I'm going to go ahead and clear all of that out. I'm going to delete out my import logo because we don't need that. App.css cleared out. App.js, delete the header or everything inside the div. Delete out the import. And then the last thing we need to do, head to our, plup, our public folder, go to our index.html. And I am going to head over to my vanilla version, copy this link tag for my bootstrap. And I'm going to go back over to my index.html, scroll down towards the bottom of it. I'll rename my title tag uh, React Blog. And then I'm going to throw my bootstrap link in right underneath the title tab. I said we gave you second monitors so that you could uh, juggle all the windows we make you open. The real reason we gave it to you is so when your head stopped turning, I know that you guys are caught up and good to go.
We shouldn't see anything over in our tab, but as long as we've got our bootstrap link up in our index.html, our app.css cleared out, and our app.js looking like this, we will be ready to rock and roll on our project. I hate that feeling I have to sneeze, but I can't. All right, everyone good? Anyone need a minute? Okay, so let's just relive what we had going on in our blog. We had a couple things. We had our homepage, which showed a, a little snippet of our blog posts. We had a login page, which we'll come back to. We clicked on read more, and then that took us into our post information. And then we also had it so that if we did log in, and I totally have to cheat in looking at the login JS, uh, username max password is secret. So if we log in, it took us to the new post page. So that's what we're going to get started with first. I like creating all of my components so that they're all done and out of the way, and then I can always come back to them. So in my SRC folder, I'm going to create a couple new files. I like right-clicking on the SRC folder and going to new file. You guys can create your new file as long, however you want, as long as you make sure it's in SRC. So I'm going to create the files are home, um, new post, read post, and login. Those are the four that I'm going to create. So, and this is going to be a rinse and repeat, create my home JS and say const home is equal to a function. It's going to return a div and then we export our default home. And inside of this, I'm going to just throw an H1 so we can see if this is working. So this is a little different than what we've done, but I'm just throwing an H1 in here to test to make sure that I can actually get to that page. So I'm going to create my home. I'm going to create my new posts.js. Turn a div, which an h1 of new post, and export my default new post. Going to And I'm going to start a poll for you guys. If you are just taking notes and following along, that is totally fine. Go ahead and let me know that. Or if you're creating those files, just wait to vote until you've got all those files created. I can't believe I just did this. We were supposed to do chat part two tonight. We never finished our chat application. Whoops. Well, we'll be coming back to that on Thursday. 
And we'll finish out the blog project today. Sorry about that, guys. Totally forgot that chat wasn't finished. My bad. All right, most of you guys are voted in. Give you one more minute here, and then we will get to get in our router working. Take one night off, and I just completely forget where we are totally. Okay, I think that's everyone. So let's dive in here. All right, so we've got a problem that we've never faced before. We know that we can get our components to show up, right? So we could do something like import home from dot slash home. I can come in my app and I can throw my home in here. And if I look on my localhost 3000, I see my home showing up. But React by default doesn't let us come up here and throw in slash and say something like new post. It's like, nope, you get the home page. And I can even say new post.js. It's like, nope, you get the home page. Well, why is that? Because our app.js is set up only to return out the home. It doesn't let us access these other files because those components may be used in other components. We may not want the login page to be a completely separate page. We may want the login component to only show up in the home page. So we don't want the end user to be able to go to a specific component on a completely separate page if that component is only designed to be nested into another component right, would look really weird. So we need some way of controlling what, what components are actually meant to be their own separate pages. And in order to do that, we need to tell React, hey, these paths line up with these components. So let's see how we set all of that up. I'm going to come up above my function app but below my imports, and I'm going to say const my routes. And my routes is going to create a browser router. And if you use the autocomplete on that, you will see an import appeared up here, create browser router from React Router DOM. Wait, where did we see this React Router DOM before? We NPM installed it. If we missed that npm install command in the terminal, it would give us an error message at this point and say, cannot find package React Router DOM. So we can't just import things all willy nilly. We can only import things that are our own files, or we can import packages as long as we have installed them first. So React isn't going to go out and install this behind the scenes. We need to install it. Once we've run that install command, we are able to import things in here. And if you're saying, Max, how would I ever know what create, create Browser Router is doing? You could always go over to that documentation, scroll down a little bit, and they will show you Create Browser Router, and they will show you how to create those routes in the documentation. But have no fear. I've done this once or twice before. So we're going to create our Browser Router. It is going to take an array. And that array is going to have some objects. And each object is going to be its own element. So what we're going to do is we're going to say pass an empty slash. That empty slash is saying the home page or index.html, basically. And that is going to return an element of our home page. And we're going to rinse and repeat here. We're going to say, hey, there's another path that is going to be our new post page. And that is going to return an element of new 
of new posts. Now, VS Code, again, trying to play tricks with me, it's not auto-importing. So be careful. My home auto-imported my new post I need to import by hand up at the top. So make sure whenever we're using these components, it knows what files those components are coming from. And then finally, we need to do our path to the read page, which is going to return an element of read post. I'm going to go ahead and save that. Those are our three routes that we're going to start with tonight. But we aren't using these routes anywhere yet. It's kind of like these imports. We've imported them. We use them in here, but it doesn't know where my route is supposed to go or where it shows up yet. So it's actually really, really easy. All we do is we come down into our app, and instead of returning out the home page, we are going to use a router provider. And I auto imported that. So my import now is importing two different things from our NPM package of React Router DOM. It's importing our create browser router and our router provider. We're using our create browser router here. We're also going to use our uh, router provider here. And that takes a prop of a router. And we are going to pass the router prop are my routes. So I go ahead and save that. I come over here to my project. And I'm going to go up to the URL and make sure I can get to my home page. I also am going to throw a slash at the end and type in new post, make sure it matches my path exactly here. And if I hit enter on that, I should get my new post. And finally, if I go to my read page, I should get to my read post. So I'm going to go back to my home page, but you want to test, make sure you can get to all four pages. So again, what's a router? Well, React by default only lets you build what we call SBAs or single page applications. In order to have multiple pages, we need some way to connect the router, the path is in the browser, to route to the proper components, which will each be their own separate pages. We accomplish that with React Router DOM, which is just a package that uh, lets React create multi-page applications by connecting paths to components, basically making our components act like their own pages. This is the setup for it. We will get a little fancier later on setting up a layout. That layout will allow us to put a nav bar um, on one component and then not need to repeat that nav bar on every other page. So we'll build up to some more advanced routing use cases here, but this will get us started on our multiple pages. Now we can kind of switch over to moving existing components over. So I'll give you guys a minute there. Um, again, if this is working, you should be able to take whatever path is here Put it in your URL up at the top. We don't have links yet, but you should be able to put the path after the URL, hit enter and have that page pop up. You also should not have any errors or warnings in your terminal. If you do, chances are you may have missed an import, the three separate files, plus the two things. One's a function and one's a component, but I guess all components are functions. Anyway, Two things coming out of React Router DOM, our CSS file, and three things coming out of these components. The order of these does not matter at this point. Sometimes the order matters in imports. In this case, it doesn't. Terry. So the create browser router uh 
<clears throat> we need to make it order to uh, make like a multi-page um what like <clears throat> correct multi-page on our project right correct okay and if you do have a single page capstone you do not need a router um but the vast majority of you will have multiple pages um and even if your your project is single page um, you'll probably want to do like an about page or a contact me page or something like that. Um, so unless you are making an application that is really intentionally only one page, uh, chances are you will need a browser router or a, a React router DOM um, to get your project to work. Everyone good? Anyone need another minute? I do. Okay. And for the people who are following or not following along, feel free to pop open the React Router documentation, read through the getting started section, see if you have any questions there. I'll post the link in. Feel free to skim that, see if you have any questions. The route provider, yeah. So basically, we've created this thing called my routes, right? But what do we know about variables? Same thing about functions, right? They don't really do anything until we ask them to be used. And so before we put this router provider in, if I just comment it out, you'll see that my routes here is grayed out. It's like, all right, you made this thing, but it's not getting used yet. So it would be like the equivalent of importing these components, but then never telling it where that component is meant to show up. So what the router provider does is it takes these routes that we created, this giant thing up here, and it says, hey, these routes should show up inside my div class name app. So it's basically saying, take this configuration of all of these different things that can show up, and this is where they should show up inside this thing called router provider that also comes from React Router Dot. Thank you. Of course. So is it so is it kind of like when you like setting up like vanilla like JavaScript like for example use like HTML and you're just linking like uh let's say the home page to like new page and you just like put a link to like the new page so so the user can like click on it is it is it is it, is it pretty much like that or is it... it's not we're gonna we will see linking tonight that's the step after this one. So this step is basically saying which one of your components are meant to be their entirely own separate pages. Because what how we would do that in HTML is we'd make a new file, right? And we'd call it newpost.html. And then automatically, you just would go to newpost.html in your URL, and it would work as its own separate page. But React doesn't work like that because we're going to have a component on our homepage, right? That says post details or post preview, Let's call it post preview. Well, post preview isn't meant to be its own separate page. It's meant to be just a single card on the homepage, but we don't want them to be able, the end user to go to a URL called post preview and see that component that's meant to show up in the homepage as its own entirely separate page. So by default, React doesn't let us see any of our components as separate pages, unless we set up a router and make a route for that path that is linked to the element or to the component. So what we are basically saying as every route that we set up, it is making that component its own separate page. Path is when routing to this dot something display this element. Yes, basically. Yeah, it is saying make this element or this component its own separate page. And when you go to this path or this URL, this is the component that should show up. So yes.
anyone need help debugging or not have their URLs working? I need help. Yeah, share screen. So my other two are working, but read post is not. That is because your path is read, but you're trying to get to read post. Uh, oh, I see. I understand. Okay, yeah. thank you. Of course. Just make sure that fixes it before I let you go. You're good to go. Anyone else need another minute or help? Yeah, I got a question. Um, I'm actually just taking notes right now, but I was looking at my blog post and I don't know when I make edits to my VS code, it just doesn't reflect in the it's in the website. You're doing also. the vanilla one? Yeah. Um, let me make sure I haven't hijacked on a live share. A live server. Nope, that's not me. Uh let me request and you're an index. So if we just grab your H1 and throw exclamation point on the end. That works. It is updating. So what's probably I'm trying to add something at the bottom. This is all overwritten. Oh. This is overwritten because we grab our div ID posts and then in our script.js, we grab the posts from local storage, generate out all mm -hmm. of the HTML, and then say, take that generated HTML, throw it in posts, and override anything that's in it. Oh, okay. So if we make an edit here, Right, and add an exclamation point after the author's name. Not like that, like that. We'll see we get an exclamation point after every author. Oh, okay. But that's Thank just you. because we're generating it in there. And we're going to do that a little differently in React as well. Thank you. Of course. Good question, though, for uh, connecting in where we're headed. Any other questions? Okay, um, let's roll forward here then. So first thing we got to do, got to get our homepage working, right? So we are going to head over to our home.js. We're going to pop open our index.html on our, uh, on our uh, vanilla project. And we're going to start working on that. So the head tag, I don't need to worry about. We already pulled in Bootstrap. Our style sheet, though, we do need to bring over because we did some work on that. So I'm going to go to my style.css. Don't have a ton in here, but I still want those styles to be applied, right? So I'm going to com uh, command A, command C them. I'm going to copy that style.css. I'm going to head over to my app.css, and I'm going to throw that in there. So my each one, my card title, all of that stuff will be copied over. So I'm good there. Go back to my home.js. I'm going to go back to my index.html. And now I've got a big block of code. And this is where I don't want to get overly ambitious. I want to take sections of this at a time. So I'm going to analyze this and go, all right, my container I definitely want to bring over. My each one I want to bring over. But this posts... I'm going to loop over this. This should probably be its own component. I'm getting too ambitious. I'm bringing too many things over at once. So I'm going to draw the line at, I'm going to take these three divs over, but I'm not going to take the columns or the cards or any of that. Again, because I'm recognizing that's repeating code. So that repeating code should probably be its own component. It shouldn't be in the file itself. So... I'm only going to take up until that row. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to come back over. I'm going to 
highlight my entire div for the home page, and I'm going to go ahead and paste in that code. Then, of course, uh, React is freaking out because it can't find closing divs. So I'm going to close off a div, and I'm going to close off another div until my red squigglies go away. And then I'm either going to fix indentation or let Prettier fix it for me. Now I have another problem. If I save and head over to the browser and pop open my console, it's going to tell me, warning, invalid DOM property class. Did you mean class name? Yes, I did. Whenever we move vanilla HTML over to React code, we've got to deal with the class and the class names. So I could go in here and type in name for each one of them, or I'm probably going to have to do this a lot. So I'm going to do a find and replace. I'm going to say find any place that you see a class equals and replace it with a class name equals. Really important that if you get the opening equals here, you get the closing equals here. So I'm going to go ahead and throw that in. I'm going to hit the replace all button. And that now throws in my class name. If I come over and refresh, I don't have anything hanging out in my console and I'm good to go. Again, that was class equals replaced with class name equals in the command F. Uh, you can hit the little arrow X uh, drop down to get the replace. And then I hit this button for replace all. Okay. Now I'm going to look at what else I've got going on on this page. Well, I've got each one of these call fours that's a card, but this call four, I repeat several times. So whenever I have anything repeating, I probably want to make that its own component. So I'm going to come back over to my SRC and I need to make one more new component. So I'm going to say file, new file right click on src new file and i'm going to i'm going to call that post preview.js i'm going to say const post preview it's going to be a function that's going to return something we're going to export our default post preview and what am i going to return from that I want this entire div class call for because that's the thing that's repeating. So I'm not taking the row, but I am going to take this entire div here. So I'm going to copy this entire div, come over here and paste that entire div. And we got problems. 99 problems and React's got a whole lot of them. All right, what's what's the first one? First one that we notice is React hates HTML comments. It likes all comments to be JavaScript comments instead. So those are usually easier to fix by hand. I'm going to click on that line and just hit command slash. And that's going to put it in a JavaScript comment for me and make React happy. So I'm going to do that for each one of my comments. The other thing that React is not going to be happy about is we've got more classes instead of class names. So I'm going to Command F on that. I'm going to pop open the dropdown, and I'm going to replace all the classes with class names. Nope, made a mistake. I put class up at the top without the equals, and then I put a class name equals, and shit hit the fan. So I'm going to Command Z that. Make sure you're find and replace. Equal at the end, equal at the end, find and replace those. Now we're good to go. Pause there, let you guys catch up. So we've seen a couple things here. Whenever we are moving React code over, we got to do class with class name. We've got to update the HTML comments with JavaScript comments. And now best practice is instead of moving all the code over, we're only going to move code over. And if that code is being reused, we are going to uh, make it its own component.
Excuse me. Oh, slash it. I saw a great meme about uh, people thinking they were going on mute and ripping a fart and then going, uh, you know, coming back off mute and then they realized they did that in reverse order. Terry, what's up? So I see uh, with um, you have like home.js. Why, why, why can't we use um, app.js as our home? Because anything that is an app.js is going to show up on every single page that we go to. So that's a really good question. If I go into my app.js and I add like an H1 here, and I throw in Max is awesome. If we didn't set that up, if we set that up here instead of on our home page, I get Max is awesome here. And if I go into uh, my uh, read page, I get Max is awesome again. And if I go into my new post page, I'm going to get that as well. So whatever we put in our app.js is going to show up on every single route. And that can be really powerful. You could put a nav bar in your app.js and then it shows up everywhere and you're good to go. But because I um, only wanted uh, the, the home page to show up if I was on the home route, um, I put it as its own route instead of putting it down here as it's, as it's part of the uh, app's component return. That makes sense? Yeah, so so we'll just have to like put like a nav bar on the app. You could, yes. We're gonna learn how to use a layout component, um, which gives you even more flexibility of of having one component show up on a bunch of different pages. But yes, you could if you said I want nav bar to show up on every single page in my app, no matter what one you're on, the nav bar will be really powerful to throw in there. Yes. And uh, one other thing, um, we don't put like we don't move uh, style sheet to like React, like you know how you have to put the link and then the style sheet, the link with the CSS and vanilla JavaScript. We don't do that with React, right? You don't because React does it differently. If we look in our app.js, we have imported our app.css. So instead of doing a link tag, instead we import it into the component directly. Very good question. But there are times like Bootstrap where we're like, we want Bootstrap on every single page, right? Like that, we did move the link tag over. So it is okay to use link tags if you are linking to external CSS. But in general, React prefers you if you're doing your own CSS to import it instead of do a link tag in index.html. Although both will technically work, there are some under the hood details with Webpack um, that make the CSS better to import. Unless again, it's an external and then the link tag is fine. Okay, everyone good? All right, so I go to my homepage. I'm like, where's my post? Put I, I put all my... Uh, post preview, everything's fine in here. Nothing's mad here. Well, post preview is a component that hasn't been called yet. Post preview is a function and like all functions, unless we put that component somewhere, unless we call the, the component, the function, we won't be able to see it. So I'm going to go to my home.js and over time, I'm going to need to map over this. But right now I just want to make sure that it's working. A big mistake you'll do is move everything over to React without testing it. And then you'll come to a one-on-one -on -one sobbing and go, nothing's working in React. I hate React. Well, because you try to do it all at once, right? We need to break this up. By the way, those are some of my least favorite one-on-ones where you come to me and it's just a dumpster fire in nine different places. And you're like, nothing's working. Make sure you're testing. The answer of this is not power through and I'll fix it all down the road. It's we want to test each step as we are doing it. So you are seeing me. I'm not. What did I do? I created my my login and my new post page. I wanted to make sure I could get to those before I moved on. 
Then I got my homepage working and I made sure that that, that was showing up. Now I've made my new post and before, or my post preview, and before I move on to any other components, I wanna make sure I can see my post preview and I don't have any errors. So we're gonna do that here. I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna look in my vanilla JavaScript and where did my post preview show up? It showed up inside my div row posts. So I may have to go back and update this. I'm gonna have to do props. I've got more work to do on my post preview, but to just get started, I'm gonna come in here and I'm going to throw in my homepage, my post preview. And you know what, just for the sake of it, I'm gonna throw in two of them just to make sure that they look right. Again, I'm gonna to to delete that. I'm gonna update that over time. But for now, all I'm gonna do is throw in my post preview. I save that, I come over, and I should see two posts on my home screen. They're not dynamic, they're not using props, they're not coming from local storage, all stuff we did in the vanilla JavaScript, but our posts should be showing. So if you guys are, are following along note-wise, we make a component, we update the component for to make it react -y with class name and components, then, we decide, hey, is that component its own route, its own page, at which point we've got to update app.js, or is this a component that's showing up in another component that is its own route or page? In this case, it is a, a reusable component that's showing up in the home page. So we go back, we import that, and then we test it. We add that component in to make sure that we see it properly. So before we go on break, let's do attendance really quickly. The keyword tonight is, you probably guessed it, router, R-O-U-T-E-R. -E also a great thing to buy on Prime Day if you ever uh, need to upgrade your router. Kind of a different kind of router. Different than a woodworking router, which I also have. Attendance secret word tonight is router. Again, reminder at the end of class, I'm gonna ask you guys if you notice any difference in audio quality before or after the break, because I know you all love hearing my voice for three hours, four times a week. Um, go on break, we'll be uh, back at 7.25. If you guys have any questions, feel free to answer them at that point, but we will keep on rolling on the blog project after that. I, I, uh, because I, the break. One good. One good about a router. Terry. Um, I had a question, but I forgot it. Well, if it pops back in your head, you know where to, where to find me. Anyone else? Let's dive on back in. Okay, so we've got our component showing up. We've got our post preview. Now, before we finish up this page, we've got to do a little bit more work. So I'm going to head back over to my vanilla JS, right? And I've got the cards in here. I'm going to scroll down. We've got links down at the bottom. Let's go ahead and do our first React link before uh, we, we get into the, the fun stuff, which is converting our, our vanilla JavaScript into React code. So div class ID links, I'm gonna just take this whole thing and I'm gonna come down underneath my div ID posts and I'll put that div in there for the links. And then what's different is we have an A tag here. And in React, we are allowed to use anchor tags or A tags, but we only use them if we're linking to an external source. So if I'm linking out to google.com or I'm linking out to some other website that is not built by me, I'm going to use an anchor tag. 
but we use a different tag in React Router. Why do we do that? Well, because it turns out that when we click on an anchor tag, what it tells the browser to do is go reload this entirely different separate page. And that's kind of intensive, right? Because it's got to go download the link tag up the top. It's got to go do all of that stuff. What React Router does behind the scenes, we don't see it do that, is it says, hey, instead of making you reload an entirely separate different page, what happens if we just hide the page that you're currently on and show the next page that you want to show? And that's the benefit of the virtual DOM, right? Is that it is able to do that. It's able to basically make one page disappear and another page reappear as if it navigated to an entirely separate different page. But the browser doesn't think that. The browser thinks it's all on the same page. In order to take advantage of that, we have to use a different tag. And what we do is we use a component that comes from React Router called Link. So what we're going to do is inside here, we are going to use a new component called Link. And you'll see the autocomplete goes, oh, did you mean re uh, the link from React Router DOM? In fact, that's what we did mean. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the Enter button on that. And you'll see it dropped in another import up at the top from React Router DOM. Now, link is a little different in that it doesn't use an href. Instead, it uses two. And we're going to say, where do we want it go to go to? We want it to go to the login. So that's just like our href, except it uses the prop two instead. And then we will add the text that shows up for that link login. So whatever um, path that we put in here has to match a path that it can find inside Create Browser Router. So we go to our home, I save that, I pop over to my Chrome and refresh, and it says invalid DOM property, did you mean class? Well, I forgot to update my class here, so I'm going to update that to a class name. I have my login, I click the login button, and it says 404 not found. Okay, well, why is that? I've got my login right here. Does anyone have any guesses as to why I'm getting a 404 here? We didn't import it. Where are we supposed to import it? Yes, to you're correct. To app.js. App.js, we don't have it imported. You got it. So we're going to import login from our login, I come over, I refresh the page, I still have the same problem. What else do we have to do other than import it? New path? You have to do a new path for it, oh. exactly. We did our uh, route or a uh, a route is a path tied to a component basically, right? And so what we need to do is a new route. So we'll say go to login. And when you go to the login page, what you should show is the login. So I go ahead and I save that. I come over here. Now, if I refresh, I see my login page. So good reminder, we can link to anything, but we have to use the link tag. We have to use the prop called to. Whatever path we put in here has to be a route in our router, and we have to tie that path, that route, to a specific element. Once we do all of that, we are able to see the login page there. Joe, what's up? Uh, you might have gone over it, but I was taking notes, so maybe I missed it. Um, can you use the link for linking out of the application? Do you have to use no. any tags? You still use anchor tags for that, yes. Okay. Because what we're basically doing is when we use the link tag here, we're telling React Browser Router, hey, this isn't actually another page for you to go load. Just behind the scenes, take whatever page is in there out and put the login page in in its place. And so you'll notice when you click the login button, there's no X here. You don't see it loading in. You don't see, right? It, it looks like, the browser just threw login in the path. And what's really happening is React Router DOM is going, 
no, keep the DOM the same. We control the DOM. Don't load a new page. Instead, just swap out these two components. Okay, so we got our login working. That was the easy part. Now we got to finish out our home page. And so let's go back in here and you go, well, what do you mean finish out the home page? We got our login working. We've got our card showing up. What left is there? Well, we have our script.js hanging out down here, and now we got to get into this. So what is this doing? This we can't do as a one-for-one -one copy. We could, but vanilla JavaScript isn't particularly efficient. That's the whole reason we're using React. So we've got to think through how do we convert this into a React process. Well, in order to do that, we kind of need a high level understanding of what's happening here. So let's do a quick review on this. We start out by saying, okay, log that it's linked, then go get the posts from local storage, parse them out, then make this thing called generated HTML. If there aren't any posts, show that the posts don't exist yet. Otherwise, sort them, then loop through them, and generate out this HTML as a template literal, then take that template literal, take that generated HTML, and put it into the posts. Then handle some login stuff down here. OK, well, let's try and approach that the React way. This is saying when the page loads, get the page out of local storage. Well, when we do anything that has anything to do with the page loading, if that data is going to get displayed to the user, if that is going to get set into state, we need to put it in a use effect. If we don't put it in a use effect, when we do the page load, it will update the state, the state will show it, the state will try and update itself again when the state is updated and you get yourself in an infinite loop. We don't wanna do that. So we're gonna use a use effect. So we go to our home page, we use the auto import to pull the use effect in, and then we say, hey, use effect takes two parameters. What should happen when the page loads and the dependency array. This dependency array is the most important part of the whole use effect. That says, yo dumbass, do not update the state every time this component loads. Instead, only do it when the component first loads, when the component first shows up. This empty array, it's called an, an empty dependency array, is telling React only do this when the page first loads. Really, really important. Okay, now what do we wanna do when the page first loads? We want to get all of our posts as uh, out from local storage. So we can copy and paste that right over, right? Window local storage, we still have access to Nothing special about React there. We still want to parse the posts. So we take the string, which local storage only supports storage as, as strings. We take that string, we turn it back into an array. Then we want to console log the posts to make sure they're coming out. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. I come back over to my blog home page, and I just have second post, first post showing, uh, wrong one. I still have my uh, first post showing up twice. Uh, but, uh, stand by. When I refresh, I should see null, null in my console. Why do we have null in the console? We have blog posts over here. Why can't I see these blog posts? Well, it turns out local storage is dependent on the port that you are running on. Because we are on 5601 over here, it won't let me get access to the local storage of any other website. Because the port number is different, I get 5601 out and I know, hey, that is... Um, that is a separate local storage than the local storage I have on my React, which is on 3000. Okay, so how do I, what do I do in that scenario? We actually already took care of that. 
we said in here, if there is not posts as a string, show no posts exist yet. So how do we handle that over here? I'm going to say, if there are not posts, then I want to do something. What do I want to do? Well, while all of this is happening, I want to tell the user something is going on. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to say const and we're going to say loading and set loading. And by default, we're going to pull in use state. Again, we need that import up at the top here. And once I get my use state in, I'm actually going to default this to true because when the page first loads, I want it to be loading. Then I'm going to come down to here and say, if it is loading, return a div container, spelled correctly, text center that says loading dot, dot, dot. Then I'm going to come over to my React, and I should see loading dot, dot, dot. I'm going to pause there for a second, let you guys catch up. We're going to handle that show next. Everyone good? Should see loading showing up in your page. OK, so if there are no posts or there are posts, either way, we are done loading. So we're not going to put the set loading in the if statements. We're going to say once you get the posts, even if there aren't any, set loading to false. Then we're going to come in here and add one more variable to state. We are going to say posts in state and set posts in state equals use state null. Start it out, but don't start it out equal to anything. It's null, it's empty. Then we're going to say if there are not any posts, set posts in state equal to an empty array. If there are posts in state, set posts in state equal to the posts that we parsed out from the string that comes from local storage. Then we're going to add one more if statement. We're going to say if it's loading, show loading. Else if the posts in state length is equal to zero, return this div again, but say no posts created yet. But if it's not loading and there are posts in that array, then come down and show all of this stuff down here. I'm going to save that. I'm going to come over here. I get no post created yet. If I refresh, you'll see for just a split second, I get loading. Then it says no posts created yet. Pause there. You should have no post created yet showing in your browser. I'm going to modify this a little bit because now we've got a problem that I didn't think about. Everyone good? What do you mean? Wouldn't that mean there is still one post in posts? The else if post in state dot length. Length is not zero indexed. So if there if, if it's an empty array, the length will be zero. 
Oh, I got you. That yeah, it's my question. Yep. Okay, well, now we've got a problem. We put our login link down here, and when you log in, that's how you create a post. So we just said there are no posts created yet, and we gave them no way to create a new post. Oops. Okay, let's change that a little bit. I still want my loading up here because I want nothing to show up if posts are loading. I don't want them interacting. I don't want them logging in. I want the posts to load first. But what I want to happen is no post created yet to show up instead of the posts preview here. So we're going to modify this a little bit. We're going to use a inline if statement, also known as ternary operator instead. I'm going to put curly braces here. And this may be easier to let me type it out and then to make yours look like it. I'm going to take this posts in state dot length. And I'm going to say if posts in state dot length equals zero, then show a div with a class name of text center that says no post created yet. Otherwise, I want you to show a div with the two post previews in it. But delete this entire else if out and leave it like this. Now you'll see we've got no post created yet, but we still have our login and our H1 showing. So leave that on the screen. I deleted my else if here because I did want all of this stuff to show and all of this stuff to show if there weren't any posts. So in React, I changed it up a little bit. I said, hey, if it's loading, never show any of this. This return is going to stop everything, and the return's only going to show the loading. But if we bypass this loading, if loading is done, where you are always going to show the H1 and the HR, but we're going to check posts in state. And if posts in state length is zero, that means no posts have been created yet. Otherwise, we want to show the posts that are in there. So I save, I come over, I get my no post created yet, and now we're rocking and rolling. Everyone good? Give you one more minute there. Now I moved a lot of code around. Don't forget to delete your else if statement from LPR. It should just be one if. Anyone need help? Okay, or another minute. So same thing that we were doing up here. The only difference is we moved it down here to do that inline if statement. Okay, so we're gonna cheat a little bit. I still wanna build out my login system eventually. But I'm like, I want, I want to build my blog first, right? I don't want to do my login yet. So I'm going to just comment out my login link for now. And instead, I'm going to do another link. Make sure you get a capital L so it knows to pull in the link from React Router DOM. And I'm going to link to my new post page. And I'm going to say new post instead. We'll get login working down the road. We're not going to forget about it. But for now, we're just going to cheat a little bit and link directly to the new post page instead. So when I click on new post, it should take me to the new post page. Now we got some more work to do because I forgot we got to move the whole new post page over. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to close out of my home. I'm going to close out of my login. I'm going to make sure the only thing that I have open 
is my new post. So it's nice and clean. I'm gonna go over to my vanilla code and pop open new post.js. We don't have to worry about the head tag. We took care of all of that stuff. The style.css is still using the same style.css that we put in app.css. So we don't need to worry about that. We do need to move over all of this stuff in here. And so I know I gotta do the script tag down at the bottom. We'll take care of that in a second. I'm looking at this though, and I'm like, other than this on submit, this looks like pretty tame code, right? This looks like just HTML. I don't have anything that I need to make into a separate component. Nothing's really repeating itself here. This is all just one giant form. So I'm feeling pretty confident that I can take this whole thing over in one big swoop. So I'm gonna find, I'm gonna click on my div container. I'm gonna scroll down and find my last closing div. And I'm gonna take this whole chunk of code over. So I'm gonna grab that all the way up to my container. I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna go back over to my new post. I'm going to highlight that entire div, clear it out and paste the entire div over. Now I've gotta do some work. I've gotta comment out all of my comments. So I'm gonna do that by hand. Again, just clicking on the line and hitting command slash. That is converting it into a JavaScript comment. That's number one. Oh, make sure you get any multi-line comments. Those are sometimes kickers. Number two thing we gotta do, we gotta convert all of our classes over to class names. So I'm gonna command F and do my class equals, my class name equals, replace all, save, pop over to my browser, and I should have everything showing up. I'm gonna pause there for a second. Can I see what it's supposed to look like again? Yep. And there is a warning in the console about the on submit. We will tackle that next. Terry, what's up? So uh, should we like think of the app that uh, JS is kind of like the overseers of all the other um, uh, pages? The one component to rule them all, yes. Okay, anyone need help? Again, you should have a warning here. We're gonna fix that in a second. Okay, so we've got all of this over, all of this is looking good. Now it's saying on submit, did you mean on submit with a capital S? We did, but what React is trying to tell us here is that when we do events, instead of doing them in our separate script.js file, we do them instead directly in that component. So we're gonna change this up a little bit. We are going to say, uh, create uh, const create post is equal to something that gets an event. Then we come into the create post here. And instead of quotes, we put in our curly braces. And we don't actually have to pass the event anymore. React is smart enough to pass that in for us. And then we capitalize our S. So we create the post up here. That's going to be our event. And then we link it to the on submit here. If all of that works properly, when we refresh, we have one final error left. It says invalid DOM property four. Did you mean HTML four? That's all of these fours in here. So we can fix that with, hey, go find four equals and replace it with HTML four equals. Save, refresh, and we are back to no warnings. So we create post. 
we update our on submit here and we change our fours to our HTML fours here. Man, it really sounds like I'm hammering home all the steps you have to take when you move HTML over into React. I wonder if that could almost be a quiz question coming up. Foreshadowing. Okay. Wait, one more time. Uh, I'm really hammering home all of the steps that it takes to take vanilla HTML and move it over to React. Gotcha, gotcha, just making sure. Not like I would ask you to do all eight of them, but you know, maybe a couple. Anwar, what's up? Hi, so I'm having some issues with my app.js and uh, home.js. It's saying that the home new post and the uh, post preview file is not found, but I already have it. Okay, go ahead, share your screen. Oh, now share your screen. There it is. That's my second one. Do you see now? Uh, no. Try again. Oh, I have to press the share button. All right, can you see there that? There you go. Yep. Um... Interesting. Uh, let me request remote. Uh, oh, sorry. Um, oh, was... yep. Go for it. Yeah. All right, there you go. We should have be able to have um remote access now. Uh, yeah, I'm in. Okay. Uh, let me just expand this out a little bit. Um. I'm only going to focus on uh, your app.js, home, 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 export default home. Is it just because you haven't saved them? Uh, I saved them, I think. Save. Already included. Only in casing. Export home, export home. Uh, okay, here's your problem. You're running it in the live server. You can't run oh. React in the live server. So oh, I'm going to stop that, mm -hmm. pop open your integrated terminal. And come on. Okay, there we go. And then do your NPM run start. Uh, can't find that, so I'm going to do an npm install first. Almost there, you can do it. Oh, now it's just taunting me. Come on. There we go. Now start it. And let me just make sure. I still don't know why VS Code. Isn't able to find. The paths, but this is also running super slow. Um, and then in app.js, the problem. I think I might have a duplicate in my um 
um, files. Let me just open. Oh that. yeah. Well, one problem is new post isn't capitalized. Everything. Uh, be anywhere I'm not. Yeah, yep. No, no, no. That that looks fine. Okay. Um. Let me try this. Uh. Whenever we create um components, they always have to be uh capitalized. They have oh. to start with a capital letter. Um. Okay. So I'm going. Oh, and then this. See, there's. Okay, so let me just rename this with a capital N. Sorry, I must have gotten to use the camel casing. Yeah, and it's it's weird. That's that's how React knows that it's a component we've created as opposed to some something built into um into HTML. Mm -hmm. Um so if I save that. Now you're back in business again. I still don't know why VS Code is underlining those, um, but it is working enough to to show that. I would guess that it's because the live server was running. If you quit out of your VS Code um, and reopen it, that may fix the problem. But awesome. React is isn't mad about them, so you're good to go. Thank you. Yep. Anyone else need help? Everyone good? Everyone have their form showing up like this. OK, well, now we get into the interesting part, because if we look at our uh, our new post, we can go down into our new post.js. We don't have to make a separate JavaScript file, because in our React code, we can do all of our JavaScript stuff before that return, right? So I'm going to take a look at new posts. And again, we need to understand what's happening here. Create post, we already made that in React. So now we know we're rocking and rolling. In React, we still have to event, uh, prevent default. So we'll do that. We grab the form out from the event target. Well, there's an event here. There's an event right here. We can still access that. Now, we know we can get local storage the exact same way. We create posts, we handle if there aren't any posts created, make it an empty array, and we get into something interesting here. Does anyone remember how we've accessed form values in React before? Think back to the weather app. How did we get access to whatever city they typed in? We Wait, that again? Sorry. How did we get access in the weather app to whatever the user typed into the form input? When they were like, oh, I went want weather for Albany, New York. How did we get access thing? to that? It is kind of the attribute thing where what was special about that? What was that? What kind of input was that called? And what variable yeah. type did we use? That. It was yeah. related to the attributes of the props. Yep, you're on the right track. We made it a controlled input. And what does a controlled input mean? It means we put the value on it. The value is equal to a variable in state. And then we do an on change. And that on change calls the set function in the, in the value in the state. That's fine. That is what makes it an uh, uncontrolled input into a controlled input. Uncontrolled means the browser is, is responsible for it. Controlled means React can control that input. That can be really helpful if you're doing a web app with dynamic form fields, right? If they hit the save button, and after they hit the save button, we want to clear out all of the form fields. In this case, we don't actually want to clear out all of the form fields. We're going to do something entirely different. In fact, we don't really care if React controls those inputs or not. All we really care about is that we can get access to the values. So 
this is the first time that we're not going to make all of the inputs controlled by putting a value in an on change and setting everything up in state. Instead, we're going to kind of do it the uncontrolled way. The, we are going to do it the uncontrolled way, which is pulling out the values using the event. So important to understand, we have controlled inputs and uncontrolled inputs. Uncontrolled inputs by default don't have a value and an on change. Controlled inputs in React have a value and on change, and both of those are linked into state. When do we need to do controlled? Whenever we want to be able to update the value of that form input outside of actually typing into it. For example, if we wanted to clear the form fields after the form had been submitted. In this case, because we don't need to do that, we can use the event to access the values directly. So believe it or not, the vast majority of this JavaScript code can come over into our React code. I'm going to take everything except the window.location. I'm taking the window local storage all the way up to my create post. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to come over to my day one blog. I'm going to go into my create post, and I'm going to paste that entire section in. So this is all getting posted in my create post, event prevent default, event target, old post is string, posts, array it or parse it, pull the post from the elements using the IDs, then push in my post to the array, take the array and stringify it, take that post as string and save it into my window local storage. The last thing I need to do is handle that redirect. And that redirect would actually still work, but it uses window.location. Window.location is like the anchor tag. It would actually force the entire app to reload and then show all the information. So like I said, it would work. It's just not exactly ideal. So what we do instead is we want to set this up um, to use the router. So what we do is we say, and I got to look at the documentation for this. Uh, so we say uh, up at the top, we're going to import um, Hold on. We are going to import redirect from React Router dot. Then all we need to do is come down to our window local storage set posts. And once it's done setting the posts, we can redirect to the home screen. And that's just a slightly more efficient way to use the router to say, hey, we're just switching to another component here. We don't really need to reload the whole page. So if I save, go back to my Chrome, say my uh, Max's first React post. Fill out the form. I hit my create post button. And nothing happens. Not even an error. I broke it. Post import redirect. Uh, I wonder if I shouldn't have actually used redirect fetch JSON. Uh... Okay, stand by. Don't follow me yet.
you know, you try and do something the right way and just screw everything up. Okay. Uh, okay. Change the plans. That redirect can't be used where I thought it can be used. So we do things a little differently. Now you can follow me. Instead of importing uh, redirect, import use navigate instead. Whenever we see a word starting with use, like state or use effect, we know those are a hook. And so what we do is this line up at the top, we say const navigate equals use navigate. Hooks have to like basically be set up. So you import the hook, you use the hook, and then you tell the hook what you want it to do. So here we import the hook, then we set up the hook so it knows how to run. And finally, we come down to here, and instead of redirect, we say navigate to the home page. And if we do that and fill out our form, hit the create post button, what we should see is it doesn't update the content on our home page. That's okay. We're going to make that, we're going to fix that as the last thing that we do tonight. But what we are going to do, check in the console, make sure you can see the posts that you have created. You should see the posts in the console. Again, they won't show in the home page yet. That's okay. We'll fix that. But they should be showing down in the console. And you may have a duplicate one. Sorry about that. Maybe we'll add delete into this blog project. Okay. Anyone need help? Anyone need an explanation? Anyone have any questions? Does anyone want to take a stab at what the next step is? Wait, so explain why we need uh use nav again. Yeah, so use window.location, but window.location is bypassing React Router and it's telling the browser hey, go reload this entirely separate different page. It's the same reason we use link instead of the A tag. It's telling the router, hey, router, do this more efficiently instead of having the browser do it. Um, so what the, uh, unfortunately, we can't just call navigate directly from uh, React Router because navigate is actually a hook. We know it's a hook because it starts with the word use. And all a hook means is that it's a, a fancy way of hooking into some existing functionality that React or some React library or, or package has created for us already. And so when we use a hook, we still have to import the hook, whether that's from React or another package. Then we set up the hook so that we can use it by doing this line up here, right? So if you think about a use state, we say const loading set loading equals use state true. Same thing goes here, right? We're using the hook um, by setting up the navigate. And then in order to call the hook to execute the hook, we come down here and we call navigate and tell it what to navigate to. So it's basically uh, the same thing as using a link tag except we can call it in a function instead of calling it as something the user is clicking on. All right, so any guesses? We've got our content here. That's good. Why isn't it showing up here? How can we get our post to show up up here? Where is this coming from? Let's start there. Let's look. Home JS 12. I'm going to head to my home. I'm going to look in here. And my home in line 12 is getting the posts and console logging them out. We then take those posts and we set it into state. 
That state is now up here. What should we be doing with that state next? Can you read the question? Oh, sorry. You don't call the state. So we've got the posts out of local storage. We've parsed them out. We take those posts and we set them into state. That set into state update posts in state. Now that they're in state, how do I get the data that is in the state to display to the user? How did we get the no post created yet to show to the user? Put it in the use effect? Not in the use effect. How did we display information to the user? How do we display any information to the user in React? Um... We use it in a return, right? Whatever is coming out of the component, whatever the HTML for this component is supposed to be, comes out of the return. So we said, hey, loading, loading is a variable in state, show this div that says loading. Then go check posts in state. And if posts in state length is zero, go show them no post created yet. But we need to do one more thing we need to say, hey, there are multiple posts in the state. So I would like you to loop over each one of the posts. And for each post that you have, show the post preview. That's the last thing we're going to do before stopping tonight. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say, hey, if there are no posts uh, if the post in state length is zero, still show no post created yet. Otherwise, go to the posts in state and map over each one of the posts from state. Then return a post preview. I'm going to save that. I'm going to come over here. It's going to yell at me that I don't have a key on it. So I'm going to use the timestamp as the key. I'm going to say key equals post from state dot timestamp. We did use the dot map in the weather app. The weather app, we said, hey, we've got five days of forecast data loop over each one of the forecast days and generate out the preview or the, the component that had the day name, the icon, and the temperature. We're doing the same thing here. We're saying, hey, map over the posts. And for each one of the posts, the blog posts that we have, generate out the post preview. Now, it is broken in the browser. That is OK. We, well, it's kind of broken in the browser. All we see is my first post three times. Our data is not showing in that component yet. We'll do that tomorrow. I fried your brains enough already. I don't want to get to the, the ultra crispy state. Fried brains just never smells good. So we're going to stop here. But in your local storage, in your console, you should have a number of the number of posts you've created okay if it's just one. That should be the number of times you see a post showing up in the app. Again, tomorrow, we'll make it so the actual content shows up here. But for now, however many posts you have in storage should be showing up in the blog here. Now, tomorrow, we will do a review of all of this. We're going to number out all of the code so we can follow the, the flow through all of this. And then we will get our posts showing up. We'll talk about deleting posts and adding posts and all of that stuff. Um, but 
for now. We've got to get the login page working. We got more work to do. Um, so we will dive into this project again tomorrow. Uh, depending on how much is left, we will either add that on Wednesday. Um, and then on Thursday, we will revisit the chat application and finish that up. Totally my bad for not finishing that. Sorry, we will. Um, but take the next nine minutes, read through this code, see if you have any questions, right? Great questions at this point are, why are we putting things in state? What does use effect do? What is a router? What is a route? Why do? How do we import things from packages? How do we use and set up multiple pages that are components? Um, what does the return do? What is the what is the question mark colon syntax in a ternary operator? Um, how do we make loading messages show up? Those are all really, really good questions, right? And you can ask any of those right now or any other ones that pop into your head. But I don't want you tapping out immediately, right? I don't want you to go, great, we're done with new content. I'm out of here. Sometimes it's best to let those, those questions not marinate and get them answered before you sign off for the evening. So I am going to launch a poll because I'm weird and really care about audio quality. Um, if you guys can vote quickly. Nope, wrong one. That's the right one. If the audio sounded better in the first or second half of class where you really didn't notice a difference, totally fine to be honest. Going once, going twice. What I expected. Thank you guys for voting in that. Um, okay, review your code. I'm gonna stick around at least for the next couple minutes. I know all you wanna do is uh, get out of here, but really take at least two minutes, read through the code, see if any questions pop up. And if you think you are good, you can totally peace out. Otherwise I will uh, stick around or see you tomorrow. Yes, I can re-explain uh, what dot map is doing in one second. Okay, um, the recording, by the way, someone asked a good question that I, I wanna share with the class. The recording usually posts about an hour and a half after class is done. It is literally as I would say as fast as humanly possible, but it's not a human that does it. So it's even quicker. Um, so Zoom takes like an hour-ish to process it. And then YouTube takes about another 30 minutes. Um, so if you are a late night person, um, it does get posted, I would say an hour and a half to two hours after uh, class is over. Um, okay, can you explain this posts in map again? Yes, for short. So we look at our posts in state. That's what's getting logged out here. And there are three separate things that are getting logged out. This post happens to be a duplicate. And then there's this third post. But what do we know about computers? Computers are really good at keeping track of lists. They're really bad at showing lists. So if we came down here and we said, just show me all of the posts uh, in state, it would say objects are not valid React child or not a valid React child gets the, the entire post in state, and it's like, that's an object, that's an array. I don't know how to show an array. So think about dot .map as another type of for loop that React just likes a little bit better. So you can think about this as saying, hey, we've got three posts in state. There are three separate objects in this array. Loop over each one of them, and whatever gets returned from that map is what React is going to show. So we get three of the posts. Why do we get three of the posts? Because there are three posts inside of the array. And in fact, we could even come in here and log out the post from state, and you'll see I get each three of those posts. 
So what we basically do, we don't have the post content showing up in the post preview yet, but what we're saying is loop over, um, loop over each one of the posts that are in state, get each object, and what do we want to come out for each one of those objects? We want a post preview component. Did that make it click anymore? To think about map as basically a for loop that whatever gets returned from the for loop is what React will show. Any other questions? Uh, you did not miss that. Uh, we have not touched login yet. So we will be revisiting login, if not tomorrow, the next day. We kind of bypassed that because I wanted to get the whole flow working. Um, and we got to do routing a little bit more tomorrow. But once we do that, we'll revisit login. And then if we have time, we'll do like delete and edit post as well. Any other questions? Yeah, uh, is your code going to be on GitHub? Because I've been taking notes. So I just want to make sure, like, when I'm doing it on my own, I uh, follow along. Make, it's a make very fun. good thing to remind me of, because as you can see, I sometimes forget. It is there now. Last call for questions for tonight. Well, mom, with um, HTML4 is used again? Yeah, it, it's the exact same thing as instead of using class, we have to use class name. The same thing for four. Four is like a, obviously a very special word in JavaScript. So React didn't want the HTML confusing the JavaScript with the word four in it. Um, kind of a dumb excuse, but that's what they say. Um, and so what you do is um, in HTML, we would just use um, ID, and then we would just use the word for, and this title input links to this title input. So HTML knows this label is related to this input. In React, because React doesn't want us uh, using the word for directly. Instead, they just say, use HTML for just like they use class name instead of class. But basically what it does is it makes it so if you click on the word title, you'll see it highlights that input. And then if you click on content, it puts the cursor in content. That's the, the weak reason to use it, the better reason to use it is if a screen reader is going through the screen, it knows that this text field and this label are, are tied together. Any other questions? All right. Have an awesome evening, guys. I will see you all tomorrow.